happy with this. If you want your business out there. And you express yourself. And if you don't, you keep it to yourself. Don't say anything. I've been hiding my sexuality from my family for four years now. Searching for a comfort zone. Fosberg Stakes Campus. We have Spectrum. We started. Leave your name on your Spectrum I am Essence, and I am Essence. <laughs> yep, that's what I'm going with. You can keep the laugh in there too. <laughs> I think the core vision of Spectrum is twofold. Um, one, we want to be able to be a safe space for um, people who are anywhere along the gender and sexual diversity spectrum, and even if they aren't, who are allies, who um, are on this campus daily but don't feel represented, don't feel like they're loved, don't feel like they have anywhere to go to. Um, and Spectrum provides a space and provides a family for them. Um, and on the other hand, Spectrum does um, a lot of, I guess, activist work. We do, um, for example, Riley um, was strongly pushing for the Q Center, which I'm hoping that people will continue to push that cause. Um, Q Center being a queer center, queer center um, in which students can get resources and help and all those wonderful things, um, gender inclusive housing, um, gender neutral bathrooms, things that um, most people don't really have to care about, but is really important to us. Um, that's what we're, that's what we believe in, what we push for. So the balance has always been, how do we maintain a community, but one that is still active and loud and proud and flamboyant and burning shit down. I get the impression that Frostburg and I think this may be generational, so um, college students today don't necessarily go looking um, that it has to be brought to them. So a, a gay student, a lesbian student at Frostburg, it might not occur to them to go looking for spectrum, that they may feel alone um, they need the information put in front of them to realize, hey, there's a group here for you. I know a lot of times I'll mention being an advisor for Spectrum and students are like, we have a campus LGBT organization? Like they haven't heard of it. So um, I think doing more to kind of get the word out, sometimes that's tough because for some students, you know, having sitting at a table with like a banner that says, you know, Spectrum and passing out literature, um, they worry about, you know, well, people will know then that I'm, you know, a lesbian or this or that. So some students don't like to do that kind of outreach. Um, as I said, sometimes students are coming in and they're not really out. But um, for the students who are out, I think doing more of that face-to-face -face interaction and networking with others through organizations to get more folks involved would be really helpful and hopefully, you know, reach out to the freshmen when they get here in the fall and that kind of thing, too. Um, I didn't really come out. It was just like, I was just doing whatever. And my mom was like, do you have something to tell me? And I was like, no. <laughs> I guess I had something to tell her. <laughs> she was like mad and stuff, I guess. She was like, I don't really remember. It was a while ago. I mean, she cried. She cried and she was like, um, I guess she just didn't understand how, I don't know. She was just like, that's not how I, she said that's not how I raised you. And I was like, okay. Um, well, I'm grown, so there's really nothing she can do about it. 
Um, my parents still use my birth name sometimes. Um, and I'm, I'm more understanding of that because uh, they've known me for the past 19 years as my birth name. But they've, they've started using um, Riley, and I like that. And with, with my sexual orientation, my family was not supportive for the first few years. But since I've come to college, and they're, they're not really around me 24-7 anymore. Um, I guess because of them wanting to reconnect with me, they, they've started to be more accepting, and we can have more um, open and less tense conversations. They're very religious, and those that I've come out to already really haven't reacted so well. I don't have a coming out story. Um, one, because I'm not out. Um, I am not out because it's kind of twofold. One, I don't really feel it's anyone's business. Um, if I get asked what my orientation is, or if I drop in the middle of conversation, oh, that girl's really hot, um, people tend to figure it out on their own. Um, <laughs> When I start talking about boobs in great detail, people tend to get very confused. Um, but I, I don't think that I really need to explain myself. I don't really think that, I think the only person that needs to be concerned about my sexuality is, well, me, and maybe the person that I am seeing. Um, I come from a really traditionally West African family, very deeply fundamentalist Christian. Um, and there is no way in hell I want to have that conversation with my mother. As I left the meeting, I couldn't understand. Are these people ashamed? This is the place I came to, to feel comfortable. And these people are ashamed. So I was back on my road. So I thought of other people who didn't leave me and who know about my sexuality. I thought of the person that I've been the past four years. I couldn't be ashamed of that person. Here I am making milestones in my life, about to graduate. What did I have to be ashamed of? Why was I hiding myself? But I found myself now. I am with trees. Okay.